Hello, and welcome to Portworks Lightboard Sessions. My name is Ryan Wallner, and today we're going to be talking about the Portworks Operator. Specifically, how does it differ from installing Portworks with the Daemon set, and what advantages you get with it, and why to use it. So, first, if you've gone through the Portworks documentation, and you've been, even installed Portworks before, you've probably headed over to central.portworks.com. And if you sign up for central.portworks.com, you'll get access to something called the spec generator. And that spec generator allows you to click through defining what devices to use, what network to use, and more so that you get an installation uh, spec file at the very end of that. And that is supposed to reduce the overall complexity of that spec file. That spec file in the past, when you don't use the operator, is a YAML file. And that YAML file can be upwards of 1500 lines or more. I just produced one before and it was about 1600 lines of YAML. That's a lot of YAML to manage. Now, what we're trying to aim to do is, if you notice these three bullet points, the operator model uh, from Kubernetes defines how operators can use the control loop functionality of Kubernetes for defining and running and upgrading and, and managing applications. That application can be anything that runs on Kubernetes. Portworks runs on Kubernetes, so naturally Portworks has an operator. That Portworks operator is a level five operator. I'm gonna put a little graphic up on the screen and this helps define what those levels are. Portworks allows you to get everything from the basic installation to upgrades to uh, the full lifecycle management and monitoring and logging, as well as the sort of uh, scaling and automatic tuning that Portworks Autopilot brings to the table. Now the Portworks operator also reduces complexity. That same YAML file that uh, is defining how to install portworks in the daemon set method, uh, you also get a YAML file with the operator. That YAML file is roughly 30 lines of code. And that's 30 lines of YAML that you have to manage and kind of understand. Now it can be more, it can be less. I've seen very small uh, YAML files for a storage cluster. Uh, I've seen larger ones, but generally, the difference is, is pretty uh, obvious. <laughs> uh, I'd rather manage around 30 lines of YAML than 1500 or more. So it reduces that complexity. Um, the other thing is it, it does centralize how to manage everything in a Portworks cluster. So that management aspect is key because uh, what the operator does when it's installed in your Kubernetes cluster, so the operator gets installed first and then it looks for a CRD a custom resource definition. I'll put a link uh, for that definition and sort of more information on what those are. But a, a custom resource definition defines what application is. For Portworks, that is a storage cluster. That storage cluster gets defined as part of the workflow for the spec generator instead of using the daemon set in this case. You get that 30 lines of code that that uh, describes how to install and uh, manage portworks. And that goes ahead and uh, the operator sees that storage cluster CRD and installs um, portworks on your Kubernetes cluster. And that's everything from autopilot to stork to monitoring and logging. Uh, and that operator takes control by using that abstraction that is a storage cluster. Um, there's other added benefits to things like flexibility of installation. Um, the storage cluster operator makes it a little easier to sort of define which nodes use which devices, which is historically a little harder on the daemon set. So 
Um, ultimately, they do accomplish the same thing, but the operator takes it beyond that sort of basic installation and does things like reduce complexity uh, and also tackles sort of the day two challenges around upgrades, being a little smarter about those upgrades, automatically making sure versions work together and so on. So we're gonna go ahead over to the lab and look at what a storage cluster looks like and how it's defined and applied to a cluster. So without further ado, let's head on over. All right, so here we are at the lab. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is sign into PX Central. Uh, since this is something we did mention, uh, I'm gonna install Portworx Enterprise. Uh, and here is where you can see, use the Portworx operator. So we're gonna go ahead and select that and that gives us um, a really easy way to install Portworks, and I'll show you the difference in just a second. Uh, note, you will need Kubernetes 1.12 and up. Uh, we're gonna use the built-in etcd cluster. We're on premise and we're going to uh, skip the KVDB device because we're just doing a demo. And we're gonna click next, next. Uh, any advanced settings, you can set monitoring up and CSI up. I'm going to set monitoring up and I'm going to click finish. Uh, so here's the first thing you want to do is you want to install the operator. So in your Kubernetes cluster, go ahead and install the Portworx operator. This will uh, get everything going for the operator itself. And then this is a command you can run to install the storage cluster. Or if you want to take a look at it, um, here's what I was showing you before, right? So this defines that we're using uh, Stork, uh, that autopilot's enabled, and that monitoring's enabled, and we're exporting metrics. Um, we're using internal KVDB. Um, now the cool thing is what I can do here is copy this over to storage yaml, paste that in, and um, if I wanted to do something more to this, say uh, add nodes, what I would do is just come in here and add a node section with selectors that matches labels. So I know that on these nodes I have, uh, I have storage equals true, and I have SDB and SDC. And on my storage equals false, we can just do none. So here, what we could do is get nodes and show the labels. So I have PX storage equals true. I know those have um, storage on them. If I do an LSBLK on one of my nodes, I have SDB SDC available. So now I have this file and I wanna give you a sense of sort of what the alternative looks like if you're new to Portworks. So let's just take a look at um, one of these and these specs. So here's, oh, that's also an operator. So an operator for Azure, not much bigger, right? But you can use the, um, uh, the kind of built-in cloud storage. That was a bad example for us to use right there. Um, but let's take a look at this. I'm using the operator a lot, it looks like. <laughs> let's go down all the way to this cluster here. Here's an example of uh, what you get without the operator. It's a very large spec file. Um, so this just keep in mind, it definitely reduces the complexity. Definitely reduces the complexity from this to this. Um, and all you need to do is Q2DL, create, storage cluster and you're off and running and your Portworx PX cluster starts to come up and by default uh, this will launch into your system and all that information will start to come up in our Cube system namespace and your Portworx cluster is up and running uh, and then you can manage it and update it um, and do upgrades through the operator itself uh, what you should be able to see now is a uh, kubectl git storage cluster um, in the kubesystem namespace. 
And here you can see that uh, because it's a custom resource definition, we get a little more information, such as the fact that it's initializing, what version, and how old it is. Um, this is something you don't get the daemon set because it's not its own resource uh, defined in the operator. So I hope that was useful. And uh, until next time, take care.